But first, I don't know how he survives, but he does. I don't know any other state that lives through what Victoria lives through. Yet here again, we're back facing these sorts of uh, claims about the Premier. Released earlier today is another report from the anti-corruption watchdog IBAC, this one involving the Operation Daintree investigation. And it makes for damning reading. The investigation found, and I quote, evidence of misconduct and improper influence at the highest levels of the Andrews government over the awarding of a million dollar plus training contract to a Labor affiliated union. It found senior staff, senior government staff in the Premier's office were involved in handing a contract to the unions without a proper tender process. It found that the money was pocketed, but that less than a fifth of the training was ever delivered. And what health training was given to workers, the Commission found, was poor in quality. This from the Premier, who stood up at his press conference today and almost every day during COVID, lecturing all and sundry about doing the right thing by health workers, we now know at the very same time, his own staff were doing them over. Now, you can't tell me that this went on and the Premier sat at his desk only metres away from his senior staff and that he knew nothing. I've been in the job of advising senior leaders, so I can tell you this is BS. The Premier's weak excuses today, all of this happened in his office, on his watch, and still he says he didn't know. He is, after all, renowned as a control freak leader. Indeed, in a reverence to IBAC, former Health Minister Jenny McCarkos described the Andrews government as a very centralised one, with the Premier's private office having its tentacles everywhere. So the Premier's dissembling today, let's see it for what it was, it was just well-rehearsed spin to try and defend the indefensible. Just more shocking behaviour from a bloke whose own government is now a byword for corruption. As Victoria's anti-corruption watchdog confirmed today, Daniel Andrews held a meeting with the health union chief on the 4th of October 2018, just weeks before he personally announced the funding to the union. When asked about it under oath at IVAC, we find out today in this report, quote, that the Premier did not recall what was discussed in the meeting. Are you kidding me? We're supposed to believe this yet again from a man who's made, I don't know, I can't recall, his standard line whenever the corruption cops come calling. Just like the infamous coat inquiry into hotel quarantine, this is a Premier who once again couldn't remember what was said, can't recall specific events. If you haven't got absolute, like absolute to a certainty recall, then you say so. Like, I don't know whether people would want you to be turning up just, you know, making it up. And I, I'll freely confess, um, I, don't, I do not have perfect recall of every single press conference I have ever, ever done. Nor do I reckon any of you do either. I mean, this was a pantomime today. Funny because when it came time to give the taxpayer millions to his union mates, Daniel Andrews was all over it. Can't remember the meeting, but turned up to give the money away. Indeed, standing beside him was the woman he had the meeting with three weeks earlier that under oath he couldn't remember anything about. Now, this is embarrassing to anyone who's worked inside government. This man keeps getting away with it but he does. Ultimately, as the IBAC report found, the health union failed to properly train the health workers as promised, with only 83 out of the planned 575 workers receiving any training at all. And those that got the training, well, the quality of it, says IBAC, was poor. IBAC found that the excuses by the Andrews staffers for not running a proper tender process for this million-dollar-plus contract were weak that the health union was given, and I'll quote again, privileged access and favourable treatment in its access to ministerial offices. That the proposal from the union raised a conflict, said IBAC, between the government's interest in procuring the most suitable supplier for the training and the governing party's interest in assisting an affiliated union. As IBAC also found, this conflict of interest was not properly managed nor declared. IVAC's report today also confirms what you and I already know after we lived through Victoria's hotel quarantine debacle. That, says IVAC, ministerial staff 
had an improper influence over the contract procurement and management processes. It also found that conduct by senior public servants fell short of the required Victorian public sector standards and that the corruption and stench around this government, well, was ripping off taxpayers and hurting health workers. The Shadow Attorney-General today summed it up. Last night, too many Victorians could not get an ambulance to take them to hospital. Too many Victorians couldn't get into a hospital because of a lack of beds. When you have health ministers, health advisers and health bureaucrats focused on doing dodgy deals for Dan's union mates, this is the real world consequence for Victorians. Now look at this training. The training was important. It was training our frontline healthcare workers how they could deal with situations of aggression and violence. So this training was important. But did it go to the best qualified organisation? Did it go to an organisation that could give our frontline healthcare workers the tools they need to keep themselves safe? No, it didn't. It went to a bunch of Labor union mates. That's why the report matters. And it's just one of five IBAC investigations involving the Premier. Now, it's tawdry, it's wrong, it stinks to high heaven. It debases public life and it erodes the respect all of us should have for government, regardless of the party you vote for. But you've got to ask, don't you, yet again, at what point will Victorians say enough's enough?